Um, at the end, the end of the day, it takes a lot of courage, I think. Yeah. A lot and lot of courage. Uh, which we will only find, not only find, but... Um, I mean, the only source of that courage is none other than the, the individuals who, who takes care of us. It could be our biological parents, it could be also non-biological parents, but at least there's a uh, form of parent in our lives, and they are the source of that courage. Now, from a spiritual point of view, then we say that that source of courage comes from a thing called teacher. Um, and so, therefore, we have a very strong emphasis on sort of uh, um, communicating and understanding that teacher. And uh, we call that Guru Yoga, of course. But what it means is that uh, it's, it's just a, a way to open ourselves to, uh, to somehow, of course, step by step, to embrace this uh, courage that they carry. Because uh, if you think of ourselves alone, yes, um, because they have, to look, uh, they have to look after us. Now in this case, I'm not just talking about the spiritual um, aspect, but overall, any parent, uh, they have tremendous amount of uh, responsibility to look after us. Because we are very challenging, uh, no matter how good we are. Sometimes, the better we are, it also presents equal amount of challenge. So it's, it just doesn't end whether we are good or bad. We will constantly give challenge. And um, so therefore, they, uh, they need to, how do you say, be very courageous yeah? and very caring. Courageous is basically another way of saying compassionate and, and loving and, and so on. But at the end of the day, they need that sort of um, oomph, you know, to, uh, to, to get to the day in a way. And uh, the, the more we grow up, the more the challenge, I think. <laughs> because I think uh, there's only, um, I think, a small amount of uh, period, very little amount of period where they can somehow appreciate that, they are, that we are in their lives, I think. That's when we are not, that's the period when we are not able to talk not able to walk, but give a lot of cute expressions, you know, <laughs> of gagas and gugus, you know. I think that's, that's the moment they miss the most, of course, when you grow up. And uh, it's kind of understandable, I think, yeah. So, um, so therefore, if we sort of open up a little bit about um, how they got, got so far, then we can pick up a few things from there and then be, how say, then not exactly be, but at least have an idea, even if we, we cannot really, we don't know how to really approach in helping now, either this family member or friend of ours, uh, how to help. At least we will have an idea to be able to understand a little bit better. That uh, it's like, um, in some ways, a preparation in a way, I think. Preparation for if you, we suddenly become a father or a mother, how do we go about it? So it's like uh, practice before. And so therefore, um, being out there, um, maybe just a little bit, not too much, of course, because we also cannot do too much. Maybe all we can do at the end of the day is just uh, be supportive enough, um, be supportive enough to just lend one's ears, just to hear, you know, uh, forget advice, because what do we know, yes? But at least we can listen, and listen by listening, they feel like they feel comfortable that they can sh share some of their maybe thoughts. And ourselves, we can understand a little bit better, but that's about it, you know. Maybe that goes a long way. Yeah. But first, I think we have to uh, look up to individuals uh, who have, um, who are, 
not the embodiment, but somehow at least some examples of courage. That's the first step, I think. Then we can uh, have a bit of a better perspective about how to listen, how to approach, and finally, how to really help. Now, that's an entirely myster- you know, new thing and completely mysterious to ourselves alone because nobody can really teach us how to go about it uh, finally. It just sort of happens, actually. Before you know it, it just it has happened already. Yeah. Like, for example, we uh, prepare ourselves uh, for various things, yes? Uh, before the big day, let's say. Any, it could be anything. It could be a holiday, it could be work, it could be an uh, exam, it could be um, anything. A meeting, we prepare a lot, uh, but at the end of the day, when it happens, it happens in the most unexpected way. Yeah. And that's 99% of the time, actually. And so, <clears throat> I think the trick is never to prepare. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. <laughs> uh, uh, not to prepare in a way that uh, we don't become overburdened with, with, with preparation. We just prepare enough, and uh, at the end of the day, we just absorb. That's the thing. More than preparation, just absorb. So in this case, I'll try to absorb um, how those uh, parents are handling it. Yes. Not necessarily they're the best example, uh, to be honest, but, uh, this, but what, it, what, is, um, what is really amazing about them is that uh, they really don't know, actually. They're just like ourselves. Yeah. They don't know anything. <laughs> they don't know anything yet. They're trying to do something. Uh, it's like uh, playing a guitar, I suppose. They just don't know how to play guitar at all. But at least they're trying, you know. <laughs> they're making all kinds of funny. Uh, <laughs> and every day, day in, day out, they're just. Going tong tong and just <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's at the end of the day it's just noise but at least they are trying yeah. <laughs> and uh, when our when those kind of um, teachers or parents when they pass away which is a normal thing a normal part of life of course what we miss the most is those uh, wrong notes that they have played so far yeah mm. but consistently mm. and out of heart out of their heart. So, if you absorb that, yes, that if you can absorb that part of it, then we will feel also comfortable. Meaning that, for example, now, if that day comes that we need to be actually, we actually have to take an action to help this friend. Uh, we don't have to be burdened, first of all, that I have to get this right. I have to give the best advice. I have to sort of fix him or fix her, you know. And we are not pressurized by that at all. Uh, we are, we will just do it and sort of spontaneously. Yeah. Maybe when we say something, what we say might not be the best thing to say. Or the most correct way, way to say, way to say, but at least we have said it. You know? And but it's not just a one-time wonder. That's the thing. <coughs> Sometimes we will say the best thing, you know, because uh, we, maybe we've had a good day, a good meal. Prior to that, of course, maybe read a good book, and so therefore we're kind of inspired. Uh, the mind is still quite sort of uh, um, clear about what 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 you've read or what you've heard uh, somebody talk something talk about something very interesting, and so we're, we're kind of inspired by that, and we're in that mood, in, we're in that zone, and so to that friend we are able to say the best of things for that one time, and we feel really good about it, of course. 
course, there is no way of knowing whether that actually helped the friend or not. It just, I felt good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so then the problem with that kind of one-time wonder is that uh, then uh, the next day you realize that it didn't do anything. Then you begin to question yourself in a way and, and think that uh, I did my best in a way. I'm just I'm just using that uh, using the advice part as an example. Of course, it could be anything. Yeah. Yeah, it could be various things. Of course. So therefore, the help, whatever form of help or support or advice that you give to that friend, uh, the thing is, it needs to be consistent. Whether it's right or wrong, it needs to be consistent. Like, it needs to be regular. But how regular it has to be, it's really up to ourselves. That we have to examine ourselves. Um, meaning that uh, we cannot physically do it, uh, perform the same uh, rhythm to hundreds of others, of course. Impossible. Okay? I mean, of course, we, we are trying. Like, that's why we have uh, things like hospitals and law firms and whatnot, yes, so that we're able to cater that you know, to, 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 to multitudes of others, but still we'll be able to do it very adequately, so therefore not, not, that, not enough at the end of the day. So therefore we have to <coughs> know our limit in a way, know our capacity so that, okay, uh, because of my lifestyle, because of where I am right now, um, and because, of course, uh, foremost, uh, because I'm a human being, that I have only so much time, I have so much, only, only so much energy. So therefore, accordingly, I can be that regularly uh, supportive of this to, this, to this friend. So therefore, it may not be every day, that's what I'm trying to say, in, in very practical terms. It may not be every hour. Maybe it could be a weekly thing, maybe it could be a monthly thing. But at least we have a rhythm, you know? and uh, well, we are there. Yeah. So I think, I mean, from my individual point of view, I think that's those are sort of general sort of guidelines that we can t we can try out. And often with, with that kind of guideline, there is no real sort of uh, risk in a way. Yeah. Kind of safe. And uh, it could be also helpful, also. Um, but as a, if you, now if you think of it as a practitioner, I mean, from, from a practitioner's point of view, a spiritual point of view, then what is most important is all those are, all those are there. Okay, just now one one last addition in a way is that then in time. We have to kind of enjoy it, enjoy that rhythm, that's the thing. Uh, enjoy, in, not, not in a way that suddenly, if you run out of friends to help, that we will be depressed, you know? <laughs> not in that sense. But uh, enjoy in a way that you're not bothered about success. Uh, completely uh, sort of... Uh, um, um, obsessed with success, successful outcome. But you kind of enjoy how to say, doing that. You, you, don't feel it, you, you don't feel it as a burden. You don't feel it as, oh, it's, it's the time of the week or the month that I have to go and do this thing. You know? But uh, we, we are just sort of, in a very healthy way, fascinated about it. And we feel, kind of enjoy what we do. And uh, in, you don't have... In, any takes on it about whether this is a good thing to do or a bad thing to do or the right thing to do or wrong thing to do, you just do it. You know? we just go through with it and you're not burdened by it, by it at all. <clears throat> That's what we call then, I think, we translate that into then activity in a way. Activity, activity meaning, of course, uh, even though we're not spiritual, uh, activity is all around every day. Yes. I mean, the most uh, fundamental um, part of activity would be breathing. I mean, we breathe every day. 
and everyone breathes, yes? And uh, until I said that, of course, none of us realize it. <laughs> <laughs> but, when, but then when somebody said it, says, it, uh, says that, then of course we suddenly realize that I am breathing. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so there is that sort of funny thing, isn't it? One part where, uh, where you're not breathing, but the body is breathing, and the moment you have a little bit of awareness, then you are breathing instead of your body's breathing. So, activity, activity is like that, yeah. So that uh, every day, every day, uh, activity is going on every day. Uh, but we are able to somehow label that as activity moment. We somehow make it our make make it our own. Um, so that meaning. Um, so, for example, now this routine, this rhythm that we know, we will follow, let's say. Then we will, now we will do it a little bit consciously in some sense, so that therefore, from that angle, then it's an activity. Yeah. But of course, when we're actually in it, we're not going to think that this is now I'm in the mode of activity and so on. We, ju we will just do it, regardless of what it's uh, being called or named. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah.